every once in a while, because all I do is play Football Manager, I find out something very divisive about Football Manager. This transfer tip is one of those things. And this video is about how you can use it, variations of it, or just not use it at all in order to make your Football Manager experience better. I mean, just like, whatever makes you happy, man, you know? Like, ah. A Football Manager is a complex game with a complex set of calculations being done behind the scenes to give us the experience of participating in the sport that we love in real life. But transfers are particularly complicated, and it is very difficult to take the actual intricacies of the transfer market and put them into the ones and zeros of a video game. I mean, just look at this year. Declan Rice waited days to finish off his transfer to Arsenal for like no reason at all. Ronaldo and a cadre of other people were just randomly lured to Saudi Arabia by the promise of a ton of money. Lukaku, who just has decided to try and make every fan base hate him at the same time. Why? I don't know. Hakim Ziyech seems to be some sort of personal experiment in how various teams can get out of transfers before they actually get completed. And of course, Todd Bowley just exists. But some players move fast, some move slow, some seek a move every year, and some never do. Now this brings us to Taunton Town. The plucky team I'm managing on Football Manager, which you can of course watch on Twitch at the link in the description, that went from the sixth tier to the Premier League and then promptly spent an absolute metric ton of money in order to be good immediately. We signed a whole host of players. We ran up over 300 million in transfer debt, but that's not necessarily what we're talking about today. Because among those players were superstar center back David Bulow, star winger Yepi Norback, and Holland-esque striker Dominic Kish. Kish we only signed for 8 million. That was actually a tremendous deal. But what those three contracts have in common is something called a release clause. This is a common experience when you are climbing levels in football manager. It allows those players to treat your club as a stepping stone and if they do well enough that another team sees that release clause and goes, ooh, wonder kid, yummy. Then they can just come on in, trigger that release clause and yeet, see you later. A release clause also indicates that a player has ambition. Now, if you look at a player, they have these hidden attributes behind them, ambition, being one of those hidden attributes. But perhaps most importantly, it also indicates that the player and the player's agent do not believe that your club's reputation is high enough. Now that's this thing on the club info screen that essentially dictates how the entire world views you. Now every player, every club, every league has a reputation assigned to it. And even though it's a star rating, it's actually on a scale of zero to 10,000. So it's important to keep in mind that all four star teams are not created equal, for example. Reputation is often misunderstood but it's very important for why you might want to break the game after watching this video. So you need to understand more about it because success doesn't necessarily mean that your reputation is going to be higher than the teams around you. Just look at the Premier League this year. Just because Brighton is in Europe and Chelsea is not does not mean that Brighton has or should have a higher reputation and become more attractive to players than Chelsea. Chelsea still has a higher reputation even though it has recently been less successful. And that means more players want to play for Chelsea just as in the game. The higher the reputation, the more players want to play for you and the less likely they are to include things like release clauses in their contract. There is a way to artificially enhance your reputation in Football Manager and you can do that by subscribing to this YouTube channel. But now that you understand the factors at play, it's time to get about actually breaking the game. With all these release clauses all over my team at Taunton Town, transfer windows were a nervous time. We knew one of these guys was probably likely to go because of that release clause, and after qualifying for the Europa League, Real Madrid came calling. And this is where the first game-breaking tactic comes into play. This is the one that I choose not to use. But before we get into that, I just want to tell you about the shirt I'm wearing, because you were probably wondering how I got my hands in a kit from Zimbabwe. That is, of course, an entirely fair question, but it's because this channel is sponsored by Sengalo, a website that partners with small clubs from around the world to give them exposure and give people that love cool kits like me and maybe you access to jerseys for clubs like Dynamo's FC. Maybe you want this awesome kit from Highlanders FC, also in Zimbabwe. How about Hyderabad FC from India or Hanoi? So if you want, you can check it out in the description. Grab yourself a jersey. Now let's break the game. Now, in order to do this, you need to go to the player, go to transfer, transfer status, and 
and then check out this transfer value section. And you might be sitting there going, well, I already knew that that was there. Hold on a second. Because if we go to contract contract details, we see that Andrea Carlotti has a $100 million release clause for clubs in the Champions League. If I go to transfer status and turn on my logic receptors, I can go to his transfer value and I can just set it below his actual release clause. Now it's not exactly that simple, right? The lower the asking price is, the more interest Andrea Carlotti is going to attract, right? If I set his asking price at $2 in a pack of Trident layers, then I'm going to get a ton of interest. That is honestly so low that the board will probably reject the offer because they think I'm crazy. Like my board will reject it. But if you know a player is going to attract a lot of interest anyways, you can set the asking price comfortably below the release clause and they'll put offers in at that value instead of actually matching the release clause. Obviously, the higher a player's release clause, the easier this is to do because if a player's release clause is $10 million, but their actual value, if they were in the prem, would be 100, it's going to be tough because teams will make the jump to the release clause if you don't have enough distance between your asking price and the release clause. So if his release clause is 100 million, which it is, and I put it at 99 million, teams will come in and just offer 100 million. Now, I do have a rule of thumb for this when I have done this in the past, and that is more than 10%, you're probably good. So if the release clause is 100 million, 89, you're probably good. They're not going to make the jump. Now, of course, when that offer is actually put in for 89 million, if it is at all, then you can just reject it under the guise that the team that's making the offer is not a team you want to sell to. Ooh, we have to play them in the league. Ooh, we might have to see them in the Champions League. I don't want that. Now, it is possible, almost likely, that when you reject all of these offers that may come in, the player will get angry. The higher the reputation of the club offering and the more ambitious the player, the more likely it is that they will get upset. That is okay. You can survive that. Take the path of least resistance. You must avoid promises. Promises are much harder to get rid of than a player just being upset. And they can renew over years, especially if you say something like, well, they didn't meet your release clause. If they do, you can leave. Or, well, that wasn't a fair valuation. Let's figure out what that fair valuation is. Things you can do or talk about how great the atmosphere is, how you need them as a leader. If they're high on your hierarchy, this actually works a lot of the time. Or you can just ask what they would want to stay. You might get the only type of acceptable promise, which is, I need a top half finish. I need to be in Europe. If you're going to do that, just take that promise and you'll be fine. But if they say there's nothing you can do to make me say, offer a pay raise and then get out as quickly as possible. And they will be upset and play a little worse until the end of the transfer window. And then once the team that has unsettled them loses interest, then they'll become not upset anymore after the transfer window. And then at that point, you offer them a new contract. So you still have them under contract for years and you can wait out them being angry. Now, they might ask you to lower the release clause. You don't want to do that type of contract unless you only have them under contract for one more year, in which case you don't really have a choice, do you? And I know I, I know this might feel gamey to you. It's, it's messing with the game mechanics so that they don't offer to meet the release clause and then it's too easy to win the players over as long as you're winning after the transfer window. It's not something that I do or have done in my current save. But the argument for this strategy is that there are not nearly enough options in the game to explain to players that are potentially being lured away by transfers what your plans are for the future and really understand how that's going to bounce back to you. And also the fact that clubs have done stuff like this in real life, at least rejecting offers to certain teams because they don't want a player to play there. Well, let's bring this back to this guy, Yepi Norbeck, because he left. You might be thinking, of course he left. They met his release clause. What would you do at that point? Well, that's where the second trick comes in. But I didn't use the second trick with Yepi Norbeck. And I didn't use it because I just felt like there was no logical reason that he would want to stay. This whole video is really a about finding what in Football Manager makes it feel realistic and interesting and fun for you to play. What makes the game fun for you? What makes it feel realistic to you? And for that, you need trick number two, one that I do use that breaks the game. And we broke that one out the following year. We were chasing top four. We're making a deep run in the Europa League, a team that is clearly on the next level, but those release clauses for Kish and Bulo, they were still there. So, oh no, not again.
You see, this felt different than Yepi Norback. Not only were we in the Europa League, making a pretty serious run and contending for Champions League spots in the Prem, one of my other players, this guy, Brandon Evans, he had turned down a move to Manchester United. So I really felt like I had a leg to stand on here. But what I don't like about the first strategy is that I can 100% guarantee that a player will stay. So the second strategy does allow them to leave, but only to teams that are incredibly eager to sign them. Now, I initially discovered you could do this to get around release clauses in FM 18. So this has existed for a while. This is when I was trying to win the Champions League out of Iceland. So this was like a necessary strategy. You offer them out. That's it. When a club triggers the release clause for a player, you then turn around and offer that player out. You can offer them out for any value under the release clause. And every single one of those transfer offers that comes in, you will have the ability to reject if your player chooses that one over the teams that trigger the release clause. And this is where you really enter the realm of what makes the game feel real to you. Because Manchester United stayed interested in David Bulow for over a year and triggered his release clause a handful of times. But Bulow being a German international maintained a slightly higher interest in Bayern. So every time we were able to bait an offer in for Bayern, we could reject it. But this pushed it right up to the line for me of what actually felt realistic. Because David Bulow was and still is the best player on our team. He's just better than the other guys we have around. He's a standout and it makes sense he'd want to go somewhere else. He's a regular for the German national team at like 21. And the release clause was fair money for a good center back. It's $103 million. But the reason I did it personally is I felt like I should have the option to promise Champions League for next season or promise him a huge pay raise or ask him to wait until the end of the season because he's under contract for three more years. And even though our reputation was lower, we were having wild success that season that I should have been able to point to in my mind and say, let us finish out this year. And if we're not where you want us to be, then you can leave. All of that coupled with the fact that based off what we can see from his personality and his media handling style, he's not overly ambitious. All of that combined with the elephant in the room that my reputation was still bottom three in the Premier League, despite the fact that I qualified for Europe the season before. This, to me, justified letting Bulow leave only to very eager teams that met his release clause initially. Now, I want to be clear. I would love for them to add more conversation options and make a much more dynamic transfer dialogue between you and your players, and then remove the opportunity to game the system by uh, offering players out after a release clause and then being able to reject those, but not the, the other one. The one game mechanic in particular that makes this work is that players have to choose one transfer offer they get and reject every other one because in the real world, if you tried to do this, Bulow would just go back to the Man United offer, take that and leave. But right now with a less dynamic transfer dialogue with your players, I'm glad it's in the game because it highlights the fact that Football Manager is a choose your own adventure game. It's a sandbox game. If Football Manager is not fun to you, unless you save before big matches and then reload before that match until you win, then do that because it's a game. Have fun. The game is meant to be enjoyed or in my case, suffered through often. But the point of this video is for people whose saves and whose enjoyment of their saves is going to be improved by knowing how to break the game in order to try and make it feel more fair in your mind. So if you're in a save like this and you want to use this stuff and it makes you happier, use it. And if you don't want to use this stuff because it won't make you happier, don't use it. And either way, have a great day. And if you want to watch me save actual people's saves while they watch on a video call, check out that video. It was a very good time. It's the first time we've ever done something like that.